Worldwide, over 420 million people suffer from diabetes. Now, someone in the UK is diagnosed with it every two minutes. So that's roughly about 700 people per day. So that really means most of us in this room will probably know someone who's been affected by it one way or another. So it could be yourself who suffers from it, or a family member, or a friend, or a work colleague. Now, the reason why it's such an issue is because it affects a lot of the most vulnerable members of our society. So children and adolescents, pregnant women, and also the elderly. And it really places a large burden on our society and the people who have to deal with this illness, particularly uh, parents of children with uh, diabetes. Uh, the elderly also it brings a lot of disability and it's lifelong illness in those who are young. Now, as well as also impacting the health of the patients, it also has a big impact on their emotional well-being. And what we really need to think about, as well as trying to help them and meet their medical needs with the disease and the illness, we also have to think about having a support network there to help them. And it's even more important because when we consider that in the next 20 years, these numbers are projected to increase by over 200 million. Now, when we think about in basic terms what is diabetes, when we eat food, it is broken down in the stomach into glucose. And glucose is a type of sugar that we use to fuel our bodies. It runs our tissues and cells in the body. And it's really found in many different foods, so in dairy products, bread, pasta, fruits, as well as obviously direct sugars like cakes and, and sweets. And from the stomach, the glucose then moves into the blood system, and from there it can access the tissues, and that's provided that another organ called the pancreas is doing its job correctly. Because inside the pancreas, there are some cells called beta cells, and these are found in clusters throughout the pancreas, and they secrete a hormone called insulin, which you've probably all heard of insulin. Well, insulin is very important because that allows the glucose in the bloodstream to actually access the tissues of the body where it's needed. So glucose plus insulin, healthy people, and we're happy with that. But in patients that have diabetes, there's an issue with the production of insulin or with the insulin that actually is made, it doesn't function properly. So in those cases, that's what causes the illness and diabetes, that buildup of glucose that is unable to be uh, used. So when you think about diabetes, there are three major types. Now, type one diabetes is, is, is more unusual type, and it's formed when our body's immune system attacks those beta cells in the pancreas and it stops them from making insulin. Now patients that have type 1 diabetes have to monitor their blood glucose very closely several times a day and they also have to replace that lost insulin by giving themselves injections of, of, the, of the insulin. With type 2 diabetes on the other hand, it's the more common form overall and it affects nine in 10 patients. <coughs> That's what we consider to be a disease of our metabolism. So quite often insulin is still made, but it's not made at a sufficient level to have an effect, and the patient can then become quite ill because of that. There are many risk factors in diabetes. There's a genetic component that's involved, and for type two, there are lots of other factors as well. So you could, if you have higher, higher uh, blood pressure, for example, if you're overweight, you're, you're less active. But there's also patients that come from certain ethnicities. They also have a, a greater um, risk for from developing it. And also, if you're over the age of 40. So when you take all those factors together, it means that some people are more likely to develop diabetes than others. Now, the other form I mentioned pregnant women earlier, the other form that affects those is what we call type 3 or gestational diabetes, and that can arise during pregnancy, and it has an impact on the, the mother throughout the pregnancy, but also it can mean that the unborn child is more likely to go on and develop type 2 diabetes in adulthood. But I think what I wanted to show you this from just now is it's a very disturbing statistic, and it's something that people probably don't realise, that diabetes actually causes 
one death every six seconds. So just to put that another way, that means about 14.5% of adult deaths across the globe are caused by diabetes. So it's a big issue. I mean, when you think about it, people probably don't realize, they think about diabetes as having a high blood, blood glucose, but they don't realize why it would kill people. So when it's unregulated and not controlled, those elevated levels of glucose can impact many of the different tissues in the body. So I've put some of them up here for you to see. Key tissues and, and organ systems that are damaged include the cardiovascular system, so blood vessel damage. It can lead to cardiovascular disease. It can lead to stroke, kidney disease. It can also cause um, terrible wounds that are not, don't heal properly on the patients that can then lead to them having to have an amputation. Now, so all of this, as well as uh, having this impact on the patient, it's, it's a terrible burden to them. But it also, um, it means that some of these conditions, as well as increasing their disability, they can also be life-threatening. When we also think about the high levels of glucose, on the flip side, another uh, problem is that when there's too little uh, glucose getting into the body tissues, patients can actually lose consciousness. You may have heard the term diabetic coma, and that's another, another problem, problem with that. But as well as thinking about these impacts on the patient and their health, it's uh, very, very costly as well to society. So last year alone, the NHS spent around 14 billion pounds treating diabetes. Now that really makes us think we have to come up with some new treatments for it. We have to think of new ways that we can address these problems. And I've got up here prevent. It may be that if we try to address some of the, the, the lifestyle issues of, uh, particularly for type two, thinking about cutting down what we eat and having more exercise, then that might have an impact. But it's only to a certain extent, because some patients, even when they do these things and they manage the disease very well, it still, it doesn't have an impact for them. And they still can end up progressing to the stage where they might also need insulin injections. And one of the reasons for that is a lot of those awful complications I told you about can actually be present in the, the, the patient and they don't know that they have diabetes until one of those conditions develops. And it could be five or six years before that's actually diagnosed. And that, so that's why I've got, I've got prevent up there. But what, what I'm thinking about more in terms of prevention is that maybe we can prevent the progression of those complications so that we can then try to stop patients from succumbing to these life-threatening conditions. But thinking about the research community, we have a, a hope in the future that we might be able to eventually, at some point, cure diabetes. We're not there yet, it's down the line. But one thing that we're thinking of is using a special type of cell to study the disease in more detail that maybe in the future we can use. And that cell type I want to talk to you about now is their stem cells. So many of you will have heard the term stem cells in the media, perhaps, in a class. These cells are what we consider the master cells of the body. So they can go on and form more specialized cells, such as liver cells, blood cells. And the type that I want to focus on are a very special type of stem cell. They're called pluripotent stem cells. And pluripotent stem cells can form any of the cells and tissues within our body. And the great thing about that is we can use those to set up models of human tissue that we could then use for testing new drugs on, for example. Now, the type that my group and my research lab work on are a type of pluripotent stem cell that can actually be made from any of you sitting here. They're what we call patient-derived cells, and they've been induced to become stem cells. So what we do is we take a cell to sample, could be a um, skin biopsy, it could be a blood sample, as I've shown here, and we take those blood cells and we introduce into them some key stem cell genes. And what we do is we take the blood cells and we cause them to become stem cells. We induce them to become stem cells. We call that process reprogramming. And during the course of about three weeks, that the blood cells slowly change and they lose their blood cell phenotype and they start to become 
more primitive and more unspecialized to the point when they then become stem cells. And we call those special stem cells induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPS cells for short. It's a lot easier to say iPS cell. And the great thing about those is because they have that capacity to form all the cells in the body, we can then, in the lab, work with those cells and get them to become specific cell types by controlling the growth conditions. So if we can take the cells in addition, we can add in specific growth factors or chemical signals to get them to drive them down specific developmental pathways. With the idea being that we could use those cells, for example, to address and restore the insulin production by generating a new source of the pancreatic beta cells. Or what we could also do to then address a lot of those awful complications that ultimately lead to patients' deaths in diabetes is we could generate some of the cell types that are involved that get damaged in the disease, such as kidney cells or skin cells need to set up some wound healing models. And with the idea that overall stem cells will act as a bridge to developing new therapies and to get us to the stage one day where diabetes is no longer a life-threatening condition and we'll have a diabetes-free world. Thank you.